Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video, I'm in the XR2 Raven Star. And my plan for this particular video is to do a uh, landing at Brighton Beach on the moon. And that may not sound real exciting, but uh, stick with me. Let's go ahead and switch camera views here to jump right into it and get inside the XR2. So in this particular scenario, we came from Earth. We got into orbit around the moon. We've already got it. We've already stabilized our orbit. You can see we're at a 34.25 by 38.83 uh, orbit, and we've already uh, taken the time to line up with Brighton Beach. And fortunately, our landing at Brighton Beach will be during the day. Will be during the lunar day. That's especially important in Orbiter 2016 because ambient light, uh, in my experience, just doesn't work at all. So. Normally, what we would do would be to go around to the halfway point and do some kind of deorbit burn. And that part of what I'm uh, planning to do for this mission isn't going to change. So let's go ahead and take care of that. And the way I determine when I'm halfway around is I look at the distance readout and map or some other MFD that can tell me how far away from the base I am. And when we get to, uh, <clears throat> when this number stops counting up and starts counting down, that's how I determine when I'm halfway around. There might be an even better way to do it, but that's the method that I use. So let's just warp time forward. And I know it's going to be around, I want to say 5.5 something. So we're not too far away from that point. And in fact, when we get to like 5.4, I'm going to go ahead and engage the retrograde autopilot just to make sure I'm in alignment. Mm. Uh, we pretty much are there, but I just want to make sure. So now I'm just going to warp time four, just no more than 10 at this point, because I know we're really close. In there, it's counting down. So now I'm just going to engage a little bit of main engine to bring the PEA down. <clears throat> and we're just going to bring it down to about, uh, you know, 11 and a half, 12 kilometers, something like that. Now in Orbiter 2010, I would have brought the, um, I would have brought the PEA all the way down to like 500 meters, one kilometer, something like that. But in Orbiter... Uh, 2016 since we do have terrain we have to take that into account because if we take it down too low and we go around we might actually hit something spoiler alert so now that we have our PEA set where we want uh, let's go ahead and um, uh, bring up uh, pursuit MFD which is the MFD that I'm going to use that will do a completely automated hands-off landing and I think it's really cool so I wanted to I wanted to demonstrate that in this video. So we're going to go uh, select and bring up Pursuit MFD. And this is what it looks like when it comes up. And I haven't configured anything here. So this is exactly <clears throat> what it looks like when you bring it up when you're in orbit around the moon. So let's uh, select landing. And now I do want to land at Brighton Beach. And I noticed that it's that it's already targeting Brighton Beach. And I'm thinking that this MFD must pick uh, the closest base that it can find or something along those lines. And in the case of uh, the default moon, there's only one base. So it's, it's just finding the only base because I have not selected that base. But if it's, if it's not selected for some reason or it's wrong, like if you have multiple bases on your moon, uh, just go to target just like you would expect. Type in Brighton Beach and there you go. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to decide which one of the landing pads we're going to land on. So what I would recommend doing is pressing Control i to bring up the object info, going to base, finding Brighton Beach in the list, and selecting it, there it is. And then just look at your landing pads to make sure that the one that you're going to land on is indeed free. You can see landing pad 1's taken, but we can land on any of the other ones. Now in order 2016, I actually do have uh, uh, collisions and crashes and whatever that thing is called. I have that configured, but I have noticed that I can still land on top of another vessel and it doesn't cause any failures, but we won't do that. So next I'm going to click pad <clears throat> and I have to pick um, anything other than one. So I'm just going to go two. So zero two. Now the next thing I want to do is since we're going to be landing, we want to use the hover engines to land Normally, in my own landings, when I do it you know, manually, I would use the main engines to do my braking burn, and then I would transition to hover engines when I was ready to 
<clears throat> you know, settle down and land on the pad. Uh, this MFD, to the best of my knowledge, doesn't have the ability to switch between engines. So we have to pick the engine that we're going to use for landing on the pad, and that has to be the hover engines. There's no way to use the main engine to land on the pad. So make sure the hover engine selected. Again, this was selected by default, so I didn't have to change anything. But if it's wrong for some reason, just go and click ENG to go from main to hover. Now, even though it has the hover engine selected by default, the, uh, I guess I'd say like the math model or the axis that this MFD is using is based on the main engine. So even though it has the hover engine selected, it's uh, the orientation that expects that it expects your vessel to be in is the, you know, uh, normal orientation. So in order to tell it that we're going to be in the hover engine orientation, we have to click this INV button for INV mode. I'm guessing that's like inversion or inverted, something like that. And that's it. We're, we're done. Uh, the only thing I need to do now to actually make all of this happen is to press the HLD button, which stands for hold. It's a bit odd. I think it should maybe be renamed, but nevertheless, I pressed the hold button to make everything happen. However, I'm still uh, 2,750 seconds away from the time that it's going to begin this burn. So if I, if I turn everything on now, um, let's just do it. Let's just turn it on now. The only thing it's going to do at the moment, it's going to orient the vessel into the prograde position. And since we're still quite a ways out, I'm going to go ahead and do some time warp. But any time before the burn time is 180, it orients the vessel into the prograde position and holds it there. So I kind of think it may be not, maybe not the greatest idea to do that too early because then you're just using extra fuel. So, but I just wanted to show you could do that. But for now, I'm going to go to 1x. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that hold for now and just leave it just in like standby mode. And then I'm going to warp time forward to get closer to the time to begin the burn. And again, everything will kick in automatically 180 seconds before the burn as if you if you press the HLD button and it'll get you oriented into all the positions that you need to be in. But if you're not in prograde, um, or if you're not already in prograde by the time you get to that 180 seconds, then it will spend some additional time orienting you into prograde. So it might be a good idea to press the HLD button when you're at like 250 seconds or something like that, just to give it a little bit of additional time to get into prograde. But since I'm already where I want to be, and I know that 180 second mark is coming up, I'm going to press hold now, and it's just going to spend a couple of seconds getting back into that position. And then at exactly 180 seconds, it's going to orient the vessel into the position that it needs to be in to carry out the maneuver. So I'm going to go ahead and warp time forward to let it get into that, let it get into that orientation. And of course, you could, um, and if you wanted to be extra fuel efficient, you could get the vessel into this orientation before the autopilot ever has a chance, because you can probably do it more fuel efficient than the autopilot's going to do. But this is the orientation that it wants to be in for this maneuver, and it makes sense because the hover engines are back here. So if we're going to do, you know, a, we need to thrust out of the this part of the vessel into the direction of flight so that we can slow our vessel down. But that's it. I, we're done. The only thing that we still have to do uh, later on is put down our landing gear. So everything else is completely hands off. This MFD is going to take us all the way to Brighton Beach. It's going to take us right above landing pad number two, and it's going to touch down uh, with a really delicate touch. Uh, speaking of the delicate touch, um, when it when it does land, it will cut off the engines uh, 20 centimeters above the landing pad. Now that uh, that figure is configurable. If we go to CFG, uh, cut off out which is probably this one. Yeah, set engine cutoff altitude. You can set this however you want. Uh, but again, default is 0.2. But if we wanted to say, have it be a slightly more delicate touchdown, we could go 0.1. So it, instead of 0.2, it'll cut off at 0.1. And if you wanted to be, give your passengers a bit more of a bumpy ride, you could have it cut off at one meter and have them drop. 
but we'll go with the point one. Now I'm just going to go back to the MFD, <clears throat> and here comes the burn in uh, one second. And now we're burning. Uh, this is the default graphic gives us. I actually like this one a little better because it gives us an indication of, you know, our descent, and it just looks a little nicer. Now this is a long burn. You can see it's uh, at this point we still have over 11 minutes to go. Now we can do time warp. I feel like uh, Pursuit MFD tries so hard to keep everything dialed in that at the at the higher time warps it just gets really bumpy. It seems to still work, but let me just demonstrate what I mean. If I just press T for for 10, you know we're we're doing okay for now. We're doing okay for now, but eventually it just gets to this point where it's like it's just teeter tattering really bad, and I don't like that. So I generally press Control F2. And I control the time warp, usually like between three and five is what I go for. But yeah, you can see, you know, it's just, it's handling the pitch because as we are slowing down, let me get down to real time for a moment. You know, as we're slowing down, we're starting to fall. So to prevent the vessel from just cratering into the ground, it's as it's going forward and slowing down, it's pitching over so that some of that thrust can keep us aloft. And the slower we get, and the closer we get, the more and more it'll tilt over to the point that we're completely wings level with the ground. But we can see Brighton Beach right there. So let's go ahead and do a bit of time warp. It's, uh, we were getting away with 10, so let's do a bit more 10. I want to see if I can show you that like jittery stuff I'm talking about. I don't know. I don't know at what point that starts, or if it was more. If that was something I was noticing more with when I was doing the docking versus the landing. But, you know, even now it's a bit jittery. You know, we can smooth that out just by going down to like three or four time warp. <clears throat> but as we get as we get close to the end here, uh, we do want to remember that we do need to put down our landing gear. Uh, this MFD will take you all the way to the pa pad and put you down on the ground, but if you don't remember to put down the landing gear, it will crash and be a failure. So the exact time to do that, uh, I'm not really sure. I just I try to put down the landing gear before the uh, you are cleared to land. before the computer lady starts telling me that you know uh, my landing gear is not down because once it starts, it just it's like this repeat. You know, warning, landing gear, warning. It's like, okay, I get it. <laughs> Take a sip of water here. Go ahead and warp time forward just a little bit. Yeah, I feel like it's getting really jittery now. So I would say at this point, I would not do any more 10 time warp. I would strictly do... <clears throat> I would strictly do, um, you know, three or four. Uh, one other thing I can mention. In the MFD, notice how it says BRK on. That's break. If we have the brake on versus no brake, when it touches down, it'll try to engage the parking brake. For the XR2, XR5, and vehicles that have APU, that will only work if the APU is running. So that's another reason I tend to wait to put down the landing gear until I'm just about ready to land. That way, uh, once I turn on the APU, I can just leave it on. But let's take a look outside. I'm gonna get that constantly, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the gear down now. Because I'm just going to get that warning like every two seconds. Even while I'm putting the gear down, it's telling me. And now I'm just going to leave the APU running. The gear was like a, a, a centimeter away from being down and locked, and it still told me. I think I think the I think the logic should be updated there. If the if the gear is in transition, don't warn me. But yeah, let's just uh, take a look at the landing and enjoy it. Apparently it's raining on the moon. It's raining outside. I don't know if that's coming through on the mic or not. But uh, once we get over here a little bit further, I think it's a little interesting because I, I kind of thought when I looked at this the first time that it was just going to do this perfect descent straight down to the middle of the pad. But you'll notice what it's actually doing. It's kind of transitioning into wings level. And when it gets over here above the pad, um, it kind of almost looks like it stops working for a moment, but what it's doing, I, I assume, is it's going to get to this point, 
and then it's going to really dial in that zero zero position over the middle of the pad Information. and then once it gets to that point Running. then it'll go down so you can tell it's still moving still moving you can see the shadow and then but it but it kind of looks like it's frozen in time or something there for a moment 20. but now it's going down and we'll 15. zoom in just to watch it because it's pretty cool 10 8 6 5 four, and then remember at point three, one meters which i guess is 10 two, centimeters it's going to cut the engines and we're just going to drop one Wheels down. Wheels stop. There, there at the very last moment you saw just that little bit of a drop and then kind of a spring back. And yeah, because we left the AP running, it engaged the parking brake automatically because we had brake on. So that's it. That's, uh, that's a complete automated landing. So let me go ahead and turn off the APU. So here we are at the moon and um, I, I would say you know that this is a really cool MFD to use but I would warn you if you're you know still not that great with manual landings I think it's a good idea to learn all of that first because once you uh, you know once you start using the MFD you might get a bit to the point where you're like well I'm just going to keep using it and then you never really learn how to do it manually and I think you're I think you're I think you're selling yourself a little bit short if you don't learn how to do manual docking, manual landing, and stuff like that, because it really, really teaches you like all these concepts that you're just, you're just not going to get if you're like click, 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 and then you just sit back and fold your arms and watch it happen. Um, having those, having your hands on the keyboard, and you know where you're practically sweating because you know you're trying to dial in that zero zero position and you're trying to make sure that your your descent rate is okay. It really adds a lot to your understanding, definitely. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, my little look at Pursuit MFD for the sake of uh, landing at Brighton Beach. Leave a like on this video if you would please. Uh, put a comment down below and I will see you in the next video. You know what? I never set the... <laughs> I never set the landing pad. I just targeted the base. Twenty. Fifteen, ten, eight.